Thank you. Now we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If the clerk could call the roll. We have to, Mr. President, for the uh, city council meeting of September 30th, 2024, at 7 o'clock. Councilor Wright. Here. Uh, Councilor Z. Here. Councilor Dunier. Present. Councilor Bennett. Here. Councilor Hahn. Here. Councilor Khan. Present. Councilor Lane. Here. Councilor McCauley. Here. Councilor Preston. Here. Here. Uh, late file items. There are a number of late file items. Uh, you'll see an appointment 518, Sandra Corman, Lowe Street Commission on Disability until 2027. Order 611, Fort Place Agreement with a letter of uh, identification. Communication 583, a memo on ADU zoning. Order uh, 612, authorizing the bike share program. And lastly, communication 584, a memo regarding the new report police department appointment. Motion to waive the rules and accept the late file. Second. Second. Okay. <coughs> Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, those have been accepted. Uh, we'll go to public comment. If anyone online wishes to make public comment, please raise your hand so we'd be looking for Newburyport residents uh, up to two minutes on a matter that is on the agenda. And, uh, and I'll, I'll keep an eye on that. Um, all right, we'd start with uh, Deb Mousley. And if you could just, uh, so again, two minutes, uh, state your name and your address for the record and up to two minutes on a matter on the agenda. Thank you. My name is Deborah Mousley. Can you hear me? I'm at 126 Merrimack Street, Unit 20. I'm a retired school teacher and I'm a retired guidance counselor. And I'm here to talk to you about MCAS as a graduation requirement and ask the city councilors consider endorsing this legislation that we're trying to pass in, uh, with this ballot in November. 98% of the students do indeed pass MCAS. It's not about the 98% that pass. When you pass, you get a diploma. But that's still, that gives you, that's a gateway to go on to college. You still have to take your SATs. People are still gonna look at your GPAs. People are still gonna look at the difficulties of what kind of courses you took. Those students, about maybe 4% of students, do not pass the MCAS. They are denied a diploma. That very diploma that allows them to apply to college, that allows them to get a job. These kids can't even get a job without a diploma. They can't even apply to a community school without a diploma. Now, who are the students? Our most vulnerable students. It is the students who are special needs. It's the students who are second languages or have just arrived in this country or are struggling. It's the students who have high anxiety taking a test. It's the students who wanted to be a vocational and have a vocation, but there was no room for them in a vocational school. Their aptitude for academics weren't as, didn't have the zeal that some of the other students ha might have. It's a different kind of zeal for them and a different kind of anxiety for many of them. So please consider, when you hear the stuff about standards, that MCAS, if you get rid of it, it's gonna lower our standards, it will not lower our standards. We still have to march to standards that the state requires us to do. The insanity of MCAS is this. They teach everything, and then you don't know what they're gonna test you on. No teacher is gonna do that. We're gonna teach you what's important, and we're gonna help you study for a test. That's not a possibility with MCAS. When the students do take that MCAS, that next year, they get their results. We're supposed to adjust our practices according to those results. Those students have already moved on you, to another grade. So please, consider endorsing MCAS and 
not pass it as a graduation requirement. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so again, two minutes, and um, I don't know if you tell this to, but I've uh, heard reliably that we don't have cable uh, showing right now, so I don't know if you can hear us uh, through our um, through our microphones, but uh, I may want to check on that. Um, so next would be Tim Loring. Good evening. I signed up to speak about the appointment of Matthew Simons to um, Marshall. Uh, his, he is well credentialed. His story is well known professionally. But he's been married for my daughter for 24 years. And I think I'm in a good position to speak to his credentials as a person, personally. When he was dating my wife, uh, excuse me, when he was dating his wife, uh, as a father, I took notice. I took notice of his comportment. I took notice of his signing up with the Marines, coming out as sergeant. I took notice of the conversations he had about his desire to join the police force. We watched him go through the academy and become a patrolman, then a detective, a sergeant, Lieutenant, we followed his ethos. It's not a nine to five commitment, and he demonstrated his ethos. Went on a trip out of town with his family. He was a witness to an emergency. Turned his car around, interceded, kept the man alive until help could arrive. That man is alive and grateful today. His ethos is carried with him, and I hear about it, I see it, he lives it. He's an outstanding husband, father, and son-in-law, and we're fortunate to have him in our family. And I know with certainty the city will also be fortunate to have him as their marshal to protect and to serve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Loring. Exactly two minutes, well executed. <laughs> um, next, we'd have Amy LeBlanc. So again, two minutes. And uh, yep, state your name, Amy, and uh, address. My name is Amy LeBlanc, 18 Woodman Way, Newburyport. I am an educator. I'm here today on behalf of the MCAS, yes, on two. And I'm an educator um, for a local school district. I'm an instructional assistant. I am also a parent of a child here in Newburyport, a fourth grade son, who is on an IEP. He has had his own struggles um, on top of the kids that I work with who also have struggles with autism and other, um, other developmental delays. The MCAS is not going to help those students that are autistic, have ADHD, because they cannot sit still for a test. These students are some of the smartest students in our schools, and they are not being tested the way that they should be tested when they're using the MCAS. Yes, we have the MCAS alt. That does not help them. That is more work put on our educators to have to put, put out there and do for our students. These teachers should not have to be teaching to a test. They should be able to use their standards and their, their coursework, their projects, and everything else to, te to test our students. My son has ADHD. He was up to 11 o'clock at night stressing about the MCAS test. That is not fair to him. And he was asked, I remember when we were out canvassing this, th this summer, what he thought. And he said, if I don't pass this test, I can't be a firefighter. He has wanted to be a firefighter since he was three years old. It is not fair to him to have to not pass this test and not be able to be something that he has wanted to be since he was three years old. The MCAS are not going away. They are gonna be there. It is just getting rid of the high stakes that these kids won't have to worry about passing this test in 10th grade to graduate with their diploma. So please, endorse this bill. This is something important to all of our students, students with delays, students that are trying to graduate so they can go on and better themselves. 
please support our students. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, Walt Thompson. Walt Thompson, 100 State Street, New Great Board. I came here tonight to give awards. I had a whole bag of them, but I'm going to take those home. I'd just like to ask the City Council to get on with this uh, investigation that you have authorized and approved, and it appears the chair is holding up for whatever reasons. Thank you. Uh, Jane Snow. Jane Snow, 9 Coffin Street. It's absolutely wonderful to see all the people. Um, normally, this is a very empty place. Um, this is wonderful, wonderful, and congratulations to you, sir. So I hope every once in a while you come and visit us just for the sake of coming to visit and hear what's going on in the city. Um, it's really, really nice to have you yes. here. Thank you. Um, the one thing that I would like to talk about is, I know that you're going to be reviewing the housing plan uh, Tuesday, is that right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I'm hoping that maybe you can help me with is, in very, very fine print in the plan, there's these itsy bitsy numbers, and they tell you where the source is of the information. And some people are getting um, very upset with one another, and no, you're not putting the right information down and no you're not putting the right information down and it's because the the numbers are coming from two different sources so if you use for instance the um uh, the survey that comes out every five years that we take that gives you a different number for the average income in Newburyport versus the one that's in that particular book the one that's in the particular book it includes cambridge in that survey so obviously the numbers are higher so i'm hoping you can kind of pre-think this a little bit before the meeting and think if there's a way that we can kind of pop that out a little bit more before people get more upset with one another when they're really both right it just is your source that's all and last but not least um, I know that the bike share program is a wonderful idea, but I'm asking you, please, please, do not put bike stations in a beautiful brand new park. Um, we, that was not in the original design, and it's a place where people will be with children and stuff, and I just think it's one too many more, one more thing that's too much. It is a form of transportation. We have a wonderful parking garage. It already has a place for bikes and things. And I'm wondering, maybe there's some special rule that I'm not aware of, but I would love for it to be there. I would love to see one at the um, north end of the city so that people, maybe as they're getting off one of the bus routes and things, that they're there for them to use. Um, great idea, but please not to park. Thanks. Thank you, Jane. Uh, Rick Tainter. Good evening, Rick Tainter, 10 Dexter Street. Uh, I'm here also to talk about the bike share program, and I want to thank uh, the council president for bringing forward this uh, order to authorize the bike share program. I have a couple of um, suggestions. One is the title of the order is to authorize the use of city streets for a bike share program, but most of the order is not about city streets at all. It's about the operation of the program, so I would suggest simplifying it and calling it an order to authorize a bike share program. <coughs> And the second point is uh, the first clause under authorization, where it says the city council hereby authorizes the use of city streets, sidewalks, and other public rights of way. Uh, first of all, I don't think we should be encouraging bikes on the sidewalks. Um, so I think that should be uh, taken out. And again, because this is really about the, most of it is about the bike share program, um, I, I would think that it would be better to, to say that the city council hereby authorizes the uh, operation of a bike share program as a, as a city service. Um, one thing I would note in addition is that um, by, by only limiting it to city streets, sidewalks, and public rights of way, I'm not sure you're capturing the rail trails, which is really the prime spine for, for the program. The rail trails are a city park. I do not believe they qualify as a city of right of way. Um, finally, um, the way I look at this, it looks like it is set up to be referred to um, probably public works and safety. Um, you know, the previous the communication was referred to and, and reviewed by community services, so this would be a second committee that it goes to. 
Um, as in the case of community services, I ho would hope that you would, if you do refer it to um, uh, any committee, that it would be referred also to com uh, committee of the whole so that the same people who discussed it last time can continue to discuss it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, seeing no more in-person comment, no mm -hmm. hands raised externally. Uh, we will uh, move uh, to the mayor's comment, and there will be no mayor's comment tonight. Um, mayor's feeling a little bit under the weather and has ceded his time. Let me stop my timer from the previous. Um, and uh, so we, we each received um, the mayor's written update, and that's, uh, that should be in the, in the packet, and I think we were all emailed that, so that'll be public. And we'll uh, move right to Councillor McCauley. Can yeah, I'd, I'd like to uh, make a motion to waive the rules and bring forth this committee item. I know it's here in the agenda, but it actually uh, needs to be brought out uh, going forward. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Waive the rules, bring this forward. Uh, should we vote on that? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, Council President, fellow councilors, uh, it's my honor to bring forward to you the nomination of Matt Simon to be considered as Newburyport Police Marshal. Thank you to the selection committee. Uh, thank you to the mayor for putting forward a, such a solid candidate. In committee, we had a, an in-depth discussion uh, with, with the nominee. We covered such topics as the background, um, history of increasing responsibility, education, specialized training, accreditation. We also got a snapshot from the nominee how, they would, how he would evolve the department. This progress needs our support and our collaboration with them. The goal is a department more transparent and integrated into our community. After a healthy discussion, the committee voted three to zero to recommend approval. So I put forward this item for the council's review and approval tonight. Thank you. Any second? Second. second. Motion made by Councilor McCauley, seconded by Councilor Wright. Um, any further, dis further discussion? Discussion. Mr. Donahue. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just wanted to um, thank, um, thank you. So really just to um, show a little appreciation for stepping up to um, role as Marshall. The city has, I think, a pretty good history of, um, you know, needing a little, a little tweaking in our, in our department. And I think that a lot of what we heard in committee was very welcome and, um, I am pleased and honored to uh, be a part of this appointment. Thank you. Thank you. Hearing no further discussion, uh, appointment, we probably would do a roll call. We would. The clerk would be so Round kind. Two. This is moved to approve appointment 515, which is Matthew W. Simons, New Report Police Marshal 1015-2029. Councilor Wright. Yes. Councilor Zeed? Yes. Councilor Dunyu? Yes. Councilor Granis? Yes. Councilor Harmon? Yes. Councilor Khan? Yes. Councilor Lane? Yes. Councilor McCauley? Yes. Councilor Preston? Yes. Councilor Shan? Yes. And Council President Cameron? Yes. That is unanimous, Mr. President. swearing in where I'll, I'll say a little more, but I just want to extend my gratitude and thanks to the search committee that started this process and whittled things down and allowed me the opportunity to go through the assessment and interview with them and also an interview with the mayor. And then the city council's dil due diligence through the public works and safety committee. Uh, thank you for those words, Jim, and your affirmation of this appointment tonight. This is just the beginning. And over the last decade of my career, I've really committed myself to two things, or three things really. One, communication. Two is actively listening to people, to the community, to what's going on around me. And the third is to fostering relationships, both inside the department 
uh, we have some amazing men and women, both sworn and professional staff, and also outside the department. So you have my commitment that I will continue to foster those relationships. I think the word's out on my listening because in the last three weeks since my appointment, my emails have quadrupled. <laughs> so the, the word is out, but I'm here. You have my commitment to be present and transparent, and I just thank you for your affirmation tonight. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Thank So that would lead us to the consent agenda. That would, Mr. President, which consists this evening of the approval of the minutes for September 9th. There are six communications, 577. It's a Port Plaza uh, communication regarding um, the Farmer Kmart site, a letter from the trustees to go to budget, I'm um, sorry, planning and development. Communication 578 is the um, communication from the retirement board about a new retirement system executive director to be received and filed. Communication 579, the uh, dates on joint meetings of the planning and development committee and the planning board to be received and filed from Council of Shan. Communication 580, market landing park ad hoc final report to go to uh, community services. Communication 581 is an email from Deborah Moosley on uh, ballot question two to go to general government. Communication 582 is an email from Councilor Granis regarding winter emergency parking to go to PWNS. No transfers, following appointments. Appointment 516, Christopher Fay, 20 Strong Street, Historic Commission until 1030, 2027 to go to uh, planning and development. Appointment 517, Stephanie uh, Nikitich, 93 High Street, Fruit Street, Local Historic District Commission to go until uh, 2027 to go to uh, planning and development. And the following items are coming out of the respective committees, budget and finance. Communication 573, transfer 199 orders, 598, 600. Community services, communication 574, license and permits, Applications 218, 190, 230, and 231. Planning and Development, Appointment 508. Public Works and Safety, Orders 595, 596, 601. Ordinances 177, 183, Order 594. And that is the consent agenda this evening. Can we remove fi Communication 581, please? 581? Please. Yep. 581, the email on ballot question two. That's Correct. out. Motion to approve. Second. Would we like to add the mayor's? Um, there was. Oh, there wasn't much. We well. received it. Sure. Okay. There is none. Yeah. And we received a written update. Oh, was there a written update? There was an email, yeah. There was an email. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Receiving file that would be collectively. Yes. Please. Okay. Yep. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So. Um, 581 has been removed. That would lead us to the regular agenda. Which I think that would mean San Sandra Corman. Motion to approve on first reading. Second. Shall we do a roll call, Mr. President? Uh, sure. Any further discussion? So this is appointment 518, Sandra, Sandra Corman. Corman. Yep. Till 1115, 2027. Just um, approve, approve on first reading. Uh, sometimes we, I think uh, in the committee listing, I think these are for CNS, uh, Community Services, Commission on Disabilities. I, I, I don't have the rules in front of me. Is that true? Um, I, I do. He, 
Yes. It doesn't have to be referred to committee, so. Yes, that's yes. right. We don't have to do the refer. We don't. Ref yeah, we're not doing that anymore, right? It's, it's not in the consent agenda to bring it to community services, as right. my read of it. Well, it's a late file. That's why. Just yeah. so of it. Yeah, that's I'm fine, fine okay. with it going I straight for first reading, if that's a question. Motion to approve on first reading. Yes. Right. Further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, roll, roll call on appointment. Roll call. Uh, first appointment, I don't think we need to, but exactly we could. Second reading. Okay. All right. I'll do it if you would like, Mr. Sure, Brown. let's do it. Okay, Wait, roll sorry. call. Point, point, so point, approval. Point, uh, um, point of order. I'm sorry. Um, are we approving the appointment on the first reading, or just that we approve the, uh, the um, I late file? I th think we're approving the appointment file. on first reading. Okay. Um, it will be back on the agenda for a second reading in two weeks. Okay, we're not, okay, it was, okay, we're not just approving it like correct. Yeah, without we're. a second reading. Okay, I just want to get the clarity. Thank you. Okay, so okay. That, that was by Council Zeem and seconded by. I'll second it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. On, mo on the motion to approve, Councilor Wright. Yes. Council Z. Yes. Council Dunhue. Yes. Council Granis. Yes. Council Hahn. Yes. Council Khan. Yes. Council Lane. Yes. Council McCauley. Yes. Council Preston. Yes. Council Sheehan. Yes. And Council Cameron. Yes. Thank you. That would lead us to uh, communications application 232, which is an emergency preamble on Indigenous Peoples Day, October 14th. Motion to waive the rules and accept, collect, and approve collectively the emergency preamble and the underlying order. Second. Very good. Okay. Uh, motion made to waive the rules, mer accept emergency preamble, and vote on the application. Uh, who was the second on that? You got Councilor Harmon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Should I speak to it? Okay. Now's your time. Thank you. Councilor Donahue. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to speak to this real quick. This is just so that um, the event can have the METC's truck on city property and they just, you know, the event is going to take place before our next meeting. So it's just for the, um, the one spot for METC's truck for the Indigenous Peoples Day event. So that's it. Councilor Wright. Um, this is probably a question. Um, I assume that they've received permission to conduct this in the waterfront park? Yes, I'm sorry. Um, and they also have all their appropriate um, documentation and, and sign-offs from all the appropriate entities as well. So it will be in the, at the waterfront park. It's just it's a slice of city. I think it's what the park, park is. Councilor yeah. McCall. Yeah, yeah, point of order. Is this, is this to approve the uh, preamble, or is this collectively to approve it all? Collectively. Okay, then I would like to speak. Um, the, um, the documentation that was submitted to us is an application for insurance. It's not actually a certificate of insurance. And so uh, um, uh, I saw the dates. Uh, they've, they've been scrambling, uh, 924, et cetera, along the way. So um, I would only make it contingent that we have a full, ap uh, full certificate of insurance as opposed to just the application of insurance goes forward. Yep, that's absolutely not a problem. Yeah. I don't think that should be an issue at all. Um, and they, they d I'm not sure if it got made into the packet, but their information from the, the sign up and fire police as well, should that make it in? No. No, okay, we have that as well. So that, that'll all get um, contingent on, we'll make sure you get all that to, uh, to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion? Uh, so, mega motion, waive the rules, emergency preamble, approve the application contingent on a full certificate of insurance. Oh. Just Further discussion? Uh, hearing none, uh, I think we could do a roll call on this. Okay. Uh, Councilor Wright? Yes. Councilor Z? Yes. Councilor Dunyu? Yes. Councilor Granis? Yes. Councilor Harmon? Yes. Councilor Khan? Yes. Councilor Lane. Yes. Councilor McCauley. Yes. Councilor Preston. Yes. Councilor Shan. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Thank you. That would lead us to, I think, coming out of uh, the late files, communication. Motion collectively to uh, refer 583 to Planning and Development and Committee of the Whole and uh, receiving file communication 584. Second. 
583 is the memo on the ADU zoning amendment, and 584 is a memo from the mayor on uh, police department appointments. So that was planning and development committee of the whole? Correct, and then receiving file for 584. Um, Unless you want it. Motion to uh, send order 612 since we're doing okay. late files all together, or do you want to wait till orders? Maybe one at a time. We vote on yours. Doesn't matter to me. Actually, we were, we're in <coughs> communication, so I was just okay. doing just the communication of the two of them. I'll hold. Okay. okay, so um, motion collectively for communication 583, Planning and Development Committee of the Whole. That's the ADU zoning oh, amendment memo. You want that. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then 584 uh, memo, Newport Report Police Department appointments receive and file. Okay. Got that right? All right, thank you, Councilor Zeed. And there were a second, a second on that? Second. Okay, um, I think we can just do a Voice vote on this. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. Okay, thank you. A motion to refer communication 581 regarding ballot question two to general government. Second. Councilor Z. Yep. So I did ask for this to be removed, um, and the reason is I just wanted to speak that I won't support sending it to committee. Um, I know we've many of us who've been veterans have lived on this road before with the city council and political questions, and I think there's different ranges of where you fall on that spectrum, but uh, we are inhibited from using public resources uh, in support of questions, and that's always a debate as to what these things uh, entail, and it's, I think it's very fair to argue both sides of them. So I'll be voting present. I just want to explain my Thank vote. You. Thank you. Your motion was to move it where? To general government. That's what it was in the consent. Okay. So I just left it. I don't know if anybody wants to change that further. Seconded by. Thank you. Yeah, and, and just uh, just as a point of information, I, I'd also been in touch with the, the um, letter writer, and they're also going to be speaking to the school committee about this with the argument that it might be a better fit there. But uh, we, we would take it up in general government if it gets referred. Okay, any uh, further discussion, referral to general government? Councilor Donahue. More of a point of clarity. Um, <coughs> I know that we've done resolutions to support state efforts, but is this the same thing? Or is this a little, is that different, like, Just speaking what we're to being process, asked to do? this is a communication. Right. An action could be the council does nothing on it, receives and file it, or somebody. I guess uh, I would, um, because I wasn't able to actually read through the whole thing. So w w what was the ask in the email? It's just for us to discuss it? It is uh, asking for us to you know, declare our, put our voice on our IE or resolution, yes. Oh, okay, so it is sort of like would be in the vein of resolution. But it's a okay. communication. Understood. Um, yeah. But it's for a ballot question. Okay, understood. Thank you. No further for me. Uh, so a uh, motion to refer to general uh, we'll do a voice vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Present. 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 Why don't we wait? Uh, roll call. Roll call, yeah. Okay, roll call on uh, sending 581 to general government. Uh, Councilor Wright? Present. Present, thank you. Councilor Z? Present. Councilor Dunyu? Present. Councilor Granis? Aye. Yes? Yes. Councilor Hyman? Yes. Councilor Khan? Yes. Council Lane. Present. Council McCauley. Present. Council Preston. Present. Council Sheehan. Yes. Council Cameron. Yes. Okay, five needing six, motion fails. Okay. All right, so it does not go to committee. Motion to receive and file. Second. second. Okay. Really? Uh, there was a second, any discussion? All those in favor of receiving and filing, we'll do a roll call as well. Roll call on receiving and filing 581. Councilor Wright? Yes. Councilor Z? Yes. Councilor Dunny? Yes. Councilor Granis? Yes. Councilor Hammond? Yes. Councilor Khan? Yes. Councilor Lane? Yes. Councilor McCauley? Yes. Councilor Preston? Yes. Councilor Shan? Yes. Councilor Cameron? Yes. That is received and filed. Okay. Thank you. Um, so. So. Um, that's communications and the late files. still back. No, we are not. I did, think we, we did all the communications all now. Communications, yeah, and we're back to second, re two second reading left. appointments. Two second orders. reading of appointment 513, Mr. President, Eric 
Chaffee, 14 Marne Street, Marne Road, excuse me, Waterfront Trust until 10 15 2027. Motion to collectively approve the three second reading appointments 513, 514, and 512. Second. 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 For the record, 514 is Claudio Lillenfeld, 11 Purchase Street, Tree Commission, and 512 is Nancy S. Kahan, 21 Car Carter Street, Human Rights Commission. Okay. So, collectively, motion made to approve on second reading. Any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, we'll do a roll call on the second reading. Second reading 512, 513, and 514. Councilor Wright? Yes. Councilor Zeed? Yes. Councilor Donahue? Yes. Councilor Granis? Yes. Councilor Harmon? Yes. Councilor Kahn? Yes. Councilor Lane? Yes. Councilor McCauley? Yes. Councilor Preston? Yes. Councilor Shan? Yes. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Thank you. All right, that would get us back to orders. That yeah. would. We, um, have the, uh, we have a number of orders, and maybe we can do the late files at the end. Sure. sure. Uh, first order is 603 Crosswalk on High Street at Rawson Avenue and Woodland Street. Motion to refer to Public Works and Safety. Second. Councilor Harmon. Uh, this is just a crosswalk that apparently used to exist. I'm finding there are lots of these in the city of New Report that went away at some point uh, in the Traffic Safety and Advisory Committee. Is that advisory committee? Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, we discussed this with Director Amaral. Uh, he, uh, with his traffic safety hat on, uh, advised that this could be a good location for a crosswalk. Um, I will provide to the committee chair uh, an image of uh, just showing where this, uh, what this would look like. Um, for those interested in this stretch of High Street, we have uh, a random crosswalk that's mid-block, that's in between Oakland and Woodland. Uh, once we establish these at the intersections, we will likely have that uh, mid-block crosswalk go away. That's not being considered at this point. Um, but we do think the visibility at this location is better. Thank you. Thank you. So any further discussion on the motion to refer this to Public Works and Safety? Okay, hearing none, uh, order, I think we could do a voice vote. Yes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Anybody saying no, no. Okay. Next, uh, Mr. President, would be emergency preamble with respect to uh, Congregation Ahavis Akim emergency roof replacement. Motion again to waive the rules accept the emergency preamble and approve the underlying order 604. Second. Okay. Councilor Z. So I have um, been coordinating with the planning office and the CPC over the last several weeks on this and I'm sorry to bring it forward as an emergency but it did seem like the most prudent thing to do. Um, so first thing is this is an application to the CPC. It is a so-called mid-cycle or out-of-band application. It's not coming in with the usual where they do the whole year, um, but it is 100% permissible and there are funds in the CPC so that, that makes them available for appropriation through the same process we usually do, which is application, CPC meets, uh, the committee meets, makes a recommendation, in this case they have done so, and then it comes before the city council. Um, so we are sort of undertaking that same process. They have indeed met and recommended this project. Um, to speak to the project itself, it's a $38,000 request for replacement of the roof. Um, and it is uh, being applied for under the historic preservation category. Um, as we usually do with CPC applications, um, CPA applications that when it's a historic uh, preservation category, usually the number one questions around the preservation restriction. There's already a, a standing preservation restriction on this building um, because of prior uh, uh, appropriations of funding that were made under CPA. The $38,000 would go to replacement of the roof. Uh, I don't know if you all had a chance to check it out, but the CPA, uh, of course, through OpenGov now, you can view the application. And so uh, it would be to replace the roof. And the timeliness question comes in for two reasons. One is, Obviously winter is coming, uh, as they say, and so uh, there's a concern there in timeliness in terms of being able to complete the project. And second was in communication through the planning office, finding a date for the committee to meet with the applicants is gonna be very difficult given the number of Jewish holidays that are coming in the next uh, you know, 30 to 60 days. So asking for your consideration, um, you do have some folks uh, joining us as well who probably can speak more cogently than I can on the specific project through the chair if you wish. And I hope that's enough information to, uh, to get you going and happy to try and answer any more that I can. If anybody from CPC or, f or from uh, synagogue would want to take a minute and just, I think that was a thorough 
explanation by Councillor Zeeb, but thank you, Michael. Good evening, Michael Desette, Chair of the CPC. Uh, confirming uh, Councillor's statement, uh, we did meet uh, with the applicant uh, once we received uh, the application, uh, discussed the project with them, and voted unanimously to uh, recommend the project to, to Council for full funding. Uh, I'd like to note that the Historical Commission also met with the applicant, reviewed the scope of the project, and unanimous, unanimously uh, approved uh, the, the work uh, and, and the, uh, the scope of it. Uh, we believe that the, uh, the price is uh, uh, reasonable in that the applicant did receive, uh, I believe, three bids and uh, that uh, this, this contractor uh, has done this type of work before and is uh, sticking with the, uh, the, the bid price and hopefully can get it done before uh, the uh, fall and winter uh, wetness comes and, and uh, uh, possibly damages the building. If you have any questions, either of me about the committee's considerations or of the applicant, uh, we're here to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Any Councilor Donahue. Um, thank you. So um, this is not easy, but um, I am a believer in separation of church and state. Um, I'm sorry, I came undone, and so I'm going to just start over. Um, I am a firm believer in the separation of church and state, but um, I don't really, so I don't really understand why the does any taxpayer funds are allowed to like do this, but um, I do understand historically that we do, you know, help out some of the houses of worship with CPA funds, um, this particularly roof replacements and things like that. I understand the importance of it, um, but I just want to be known that I, I, I do firmly believe that there's a reason for that part of the Constitution. Um, and there's a lot of leeway already taken, but um, I will consider this vote. It's not to, I'm not standing in opposition of it or to ask anyone to vote against this ask. I'm just um, stating my position. Thank you. Councilor Khan. Great. Thank you, Council President. Um, no, it's, it's a fair question. I get it after um, several years of being on the City Council and some of us have seen different projects come and different projects that we've questioned here um, based on what the specific use of the, the fund is, since it is taxpayer money that this all contributes to. Um, one of the things I do remember when we had specific things, I believe it was the church, uh, Purchase Street um, Church, I think it's that, no, Titcom. And there was something related to stained glass, whether we could use CPC funds on stained glass versus um, the windows or certain uh, structural things. And I believe the terminology in the language, and I don't have it in front of me, and I think um, obviously the chair who's been involved knows probably a little bit more about it, but it's about the religious, certain religious factors uh, or aspects of the funding. But in terms of the historical nature of the facilities or of the churches or the other um, religious institutions we have in our community, those are you know, uh, an asset and they're um, something that's uh, very much, I think, appreciated by everybody here and worth spending. So I do appreciate the question. I think that's some of the language. Um, this is not at all outside the realm of what we could fund here. Um, and then stepping back, I do think some of the counselors here, you know, the, the synagogue um, kind of celebrating, oh my gosh, how many years was it? 125. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I mean, that was an amazing time to see the inside and the historical um, features and the storytelling that was happening is, it, it really is kind of a precious thing to have in our city. So, um, but I do appreciate the question. I think that's what this realm does. We want to make sure that we're, because if we're not asking, residents are, but I, I do want to make sure I answer that. And I will be supporting this. I think this is completely in our realm to do. And I'd be, I'm really surprised at that a low amount. So I'm guessing there's other funding, but um, it seems really uh, something that is really worthy to do with this money. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Khan. Any further discussion? <coughs> Councillor Donahue. This might come back. Um, just thank you for that. I do appreciate that, um, the outlawed councillor. And I actually do recognize that the historical significance of the building is, is something that is another factor, which is why I was not, you know, I'm not, I'm, I was just a little on the fence, but wanted to make my statement. Um, but I do appreciate the clarity on the question as well. Thank you. OK, 
Okay, uh, seeing no more discussion, um, I think we'll, with all this emergency preamble and its money, we'll, we'll do a roll call on this. Yeah, very good, Mr. President. Son approving uh, 604 emergency preamble and the matter itself. Councilor Wright? Yes. Councilor Z? Yes. Councilor Donahue? Yes. Councilor Granis? Yes. Councilor Hammond? Yes. yes. Councilor Khan? Yes. Councilor Lane? Yes. Councilor McCauley? Yes. Councilor Preston? Yes. Councilor Shan? Yes. And Councilor Cameron? Yes. That would pass. It's unanimous. Okay, thank you. Good luck. <laughs> Can I make another motion? Mm -hmm. Motion to um, continue until our next city council meeting, which is going to be October 15th. Order 605, 607, 608, and 609, and then to refer 606 to budget and finance. Second. Uh, Councilor Z. If I may speak to the order, so, um, 605, 7, 8, and 9 are a combination. Uh, 605 is a uh, Bartlett Mall specimen trees amendment. It's about a $5,000, $4,800 dollars shift um, to uh, plant trees uh, at the new waterfront park instead of at the Bartlett Mall. The 607 is a senior celebration gift acceptance, 23781 608 is a gift acceptance, touch a truck, 900 and 609 is a gift acceptance city improvement society 4700 uh, i'm just using historic norms with the amount of inf you know uh, conversation that there's these types of things typically generate in committee and i think that um, we have a lot of important work to do and i think these are okay to continue uh, i sort of hinted at this last time and i've talked a little bit about it in committee but i'm testing it out to see if, if there's support for that if councilors really want us to take it to committee we will uh, and we'd, we'd be happy to do that but uh, i hope you can find a way to support this so we can continue important focus on bigger things that we have in committee at this time. Just if I can clarify, so um, the ones that would be continued to October 15th are 605. 605, 7, 8, and 9. And 9, okay. And 606 you. is a debt service question, so that one to go to budget and finance. Is that part of the same motion? It is. Okay, motion was made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, under reports, uh, Councillor Khan. Just clarification on one of them, I'm sorry, um, 609, also we're, we're moving to the next. So that's something for, um, to sponsor on October 19th. So our next meeting is on, um, is before that. So we'll meet budget and finance and approve it in time. I'm sorry. It's okay. I, um, or in one reading, at that meeting. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the intention. Okay. Like it's the first introduction of it. We'd have to do an emergency, and I don't think that's fair either. It's just like the middle ground, if you will. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Everyone clear on the motion that was made and seconded? Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Thank you, Councilor Zeed. And, and then... Uh, I'll just keep rolling. Motion to refer um, order 611, which is the port place agreement with letter of indemnification and order 612 authorizing bike share program to public works and safety. And, and committee, committee, of committee of the whole. Second. Okay, for both, committee of the whole. Yeah. Thank you. Any further discussion, Councilor Harmon? Yeah, thank you. Um, Perfectly fine, I think, to send this to Public Works and Safety Committee of the Whole. Enjoy joining the committee. Um, I would just to the earlier um, motion around uh, continuing, given the docket for Public Works and Safety and the docket for Community Services, where we've already evaluated this and had some public um, discussion on the bike share program, and further, given that uh, the likelihood of, of this um, order being um, modified toward less being about public safety and use of streets and more about a program for the service of the community. Uh, I would just propose if, you know, at the um, uh, deference to the chairs of those committees uh, that maybe this go to public, uh, to community services instead of public works and safety. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, I'm certainly happy to have it in community services. It, it, it maybe makes I, I can certainly see an argument that it could go either way. It maybe makes slightly more sense to me in PWS, but I also, I, I will fully admit, we have a relatively light docket. 
always feel a little guilty saying that, um, but we do. Uh, so uh, if the chair of public works would like it to come to community services, I am more than happy to have it there. Okay, Councillor Donahue. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I do want to echo the uh, ward Wars, councillors, <laughs> sentiment. Um, in that, you know, we did start the conversation in community services, but also, um, well, I appreciate that, you know, part of this order is is in regards to our streets and rights of way, which is our, you know, direct purview in, in um, public works and safety. But I do consider the bike share program to be a city service if if we're going to have a pilot program. Um, so on that premise, I, in the continuity that was mentioned, it, it does. It makes sense to me to continue the conversation in committee services, but um, as as committee of the whole, of course, if for what it's worth. Councilor McCauley. Uh, thank you, Council President. Um, I, I came in not necessarily having an opinion on this, but I do now. Uh, enlisted with uh, DPS, which is under Public Works and Safety, uh, wants uh, DPS to run a city service, which is would be under. Um, public works and safety. Uh, whether the bike are on the rail trail or not, they're going to exit and they're going to uh, use city roads and sidewalks and things like that. And the issues um, are public safety issues that we have to accommodate. So uh, while I did participate in the community service review of the overall uh, plan itself, I do think um, the way it's written right now that it should go to public works and safety. Thank you. All right, so motion on the uh, floor is uh, collectively order 611 to Public Works Community uh, Committee of the Whole, and also 6112, the bike share order, Public Works. And Committee of the Whole. And Committee of the Whole, Public Works and Safety. Okay. Other discussion? Okay, all those in favor, uh, let's do a, we'll do a voice vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that would lead us to, I think, flipping back and forth, um, Ordinance ordinances. 184, which is the new report MBTA 40R zoning amendment. Motion to refer to planning and development. Second. Council of the Hall. And the Council of the Hall. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Discussion? Sure, why not? Um, hopefully folks remember we have done the bulk of the work on this already. We also put out a order that we all agreed that we had, I think it might have been unanimous, it's been a while, but um, on the zoning already. So right now I wanted this to get into pa the packet tonight because we do need to get it on the public, on the agenda with the planning board. And we are still waiting to hear from the state on the actual official yes or no. We are assuming it's gonna be a yes but we're gonna give ourselves a month. And that was why I put out, um, we're probably not going to have this in the planning board until the first Wednesday in November. So we're gonna give the state another month to make sure we uh, get their approval first. But yeah, this should be an easy putt for us. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> should, should be. <laughs> All right, so any further discussion on this? Uh, this being an ordinance, I think roll call's good, even though it's just going to committee, so we'll do that. Okay, this is moving uh, Ordinance 184 to Planning and Development <coughs> and Committee of the Whole. Councilor Wright. Yes. <coughs> Councilor Azid. Yes. Councilor Dunyu. Yes. Councilor Granis. Yes. Councilor Harmon. Yes. Councilor Kahn. Yes. Councilor Lane. Yes. Councilor McCauley. Yes. Councilor Preston. Yes. Councilor Sheehan. Yes. And Councilor Cameron. Yes. Okay, lead us to committee items. Motion to receive and file communication 573. Second. 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 Okay, thank you. Uh, communication Sorry. 573 is the year-end financial report provided to us by the finance director. Um, the committee met on um, September 17th, and we discussed this um, so that we had the finance director presented a summary of the report in the form of a presentation. I do want to point out that that presentation is and was posted to the meeting on the 17th, so if you're interested in flipping through the slides, you may. Um, the, uh, generally, uh, to give you a high level overview of, the, of sort of the report in general, um, as has been consistent with recent years, there were some budget turnbacks, meaning less spending than anticipated, 
and there were some interesting fluctuations on revenue that I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, collections on property taxes uh, were near 100%, so that continues a trend uh, of getting ever closer to that actual 100%. Uh, a lot of the conversation in the summary was really uh, local receipts fluctuating from year to year. Uh, meals and rooms, for example, which has been an, a topic of interest, was up uh, about, rooms in particular were up about 18%, and that was largely attributed to short-term rentals uh, coming onto the books, if you will. Um, building permits were also up about 33%, um, and that was a combination of factors. One is, some, in some cases, there were simply more of those applications, but also the City Council undertook some fee increases to those in the last year or so um, that are believed to have contributed towards that. Um, Enterprise funds were all down uh, year over year uh, on the uh, water and sewer side, uh, and actually both all three of them, water, sewer, and harbor, uh, all seem to tie back to weather uh, in, the last, you know, in the last fiscal year. Remember, we had a very rainy summer last year, so that led to lower consumption of water and sewer, and also uh, cut down actually on harbor because they're so weather dependent. Nice weather means revenue, and unfortunately rainy weather does not, and we had a lot of um, uh, rainy weekends. Um, we did talk a little bit about some of the uh, grant accounts were asked about uh, during public comment, um, and some of them were in the negative, and the question was why or how can a grant account be in the negative? And uh, the answer was, as often is the case, a timing consideration. So sometimes things run into the red where the city's expending funds and then expecting grant to come, you know, grant that we've already been awarded, but the funds haven't followed. Uh, so for example, the bulkhead project did run into the red. That caused the city uh, to have to issue a short-term note a, a so-called grant anticipation note. These are some of the financial things that we don't approve or do here per se, but they're things that are necessary to make the money work and make the accounting work as well. Um, we discussed a little bit more in depth some of the, the few fluctuations in there. Uh, I would say that uh, the finance director felt that water sewer uh, were both stabilizing a bit. Um, we've had kind of a big up and down with COVID, which is now feels like forever ago, and then uh, bad weather and good weather and all those kinds of turns. And then um, Harbor was also uh, feeling a little bit better. So um, that was that. And uh, the, the committee recommended three to zero to recommend a receiving file. Okay. Thank you. Any discussion, questions? Okay, it's motion made uh, to receive and file made by Councilor Zeed, seconded by Councilor Harmon. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, thank you. Next is a motion to approve transfer 199. Second. This is a $50,000 transfer from an account called Portable Police Radios to Portable to Police Cruiser Computers, pardon me, in the same amount. Um, so essentially what happened here is that the, the city did and the city council did appropriate funds uh, to replace uh, portable police radios, which are of course what they carry uh, with them. And uh, what ended up happening was unexpectedly a grant came through from the state um, that will, will fund that. Uh, so the ask here is to, uh, instead of utilizing those funds for the purpose of police radios, to put them towards police cruiser computers. Um, we did talk about how this, uh, what the connection or nexus is with the uh, committee, uh, pardon me, the capital improvement plan. And um, that was listed in last year's plan. And this transfer isn't gonna quite do all of the computers that the CIP had called for. It's not quite enough money, but it will replace 10 computers in the cruisers at 5K a piece. That's your $50,000. And um, the reason is that, you know, much like any technology, I guess that the, the cruiser computers are having some failures, some issues, and basically are, re you know, in general reaching their end of life. Um, I, I would say a good part of the conversation did focus around the capital improvement plan, uh, and, and uh, so it did uh, result in a final vote of two to one uh, in favor of supporting this, and uh, that's the committee's recommendation. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion on transfer 199? Councilor Harmon. Thank you. Um, so I was the dissenting vote on this um, as part of the confusion and uh, the grant, uh, the transfer form actually references the project number from the 2025 CIP. The project does, as the chair said, exist in the 2024 CIP. Um, but generally where we are still outstanding on our obligation to approve uh, current CIP, uh, I couldn't support this, so thank you. Further discussion? Uh, hearing none, I'm gonna do a voice vote on this, I think. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Okay. 
That would be 10 to 1. Next is a motion to approve order 598. Second. This is a grant acceptance in the amount of $110,034 from Green Communities. Um, again, the committee met on this. Uh, essentially, the main uh, heart of this $110,000 is essentially Im largely improving weatherization, weather stripping primarily across a variety of city buildings. Um, we did talk a little bit about, uh, you know, creating a maintenance type obligation or event and uh, generally speaking, I think the, uh, the idea was that this, the life cycle of this effort will be, you know, maybe three to five years. So yes, there may be some need to refund this in the future or simply let the weather stripping um, sort of go. Uh, it is not replacing existing weather stripping, we understand, uh, from the finance director, but rather uh, mostly adding. There was some replacement, so I think this is trying to plug up leaky buildings, frankly, is probably the shortest way to describe it. Um, and uh, it was three to zero on committee. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, uh, we could do a voice vote on uh, you know, granting. Yeah, I think we can do a voice vote. Sure. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Thank you. Okay, a motion to approve order 600. Second. This is a uh, approval to pay prior year bills. Um, we did not generate a lot of conversation about this. Just as a brief reminder, um, the fiscal year closes. Sometimes invoices keep coming in the mail, and that's the result uh, uh, that it results in this effort or action needing to be taken. Um, it is within state law, as noticed, 44, section 34, that allows us to pay these prior bills, and you have a list of them memorialized. Um, again, we didn't uh, see any one of them being, I think, important or big enough to generate individual conversation. It was three to zero on committee. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, thank you, Councilor. So uh, that's it for business tonight. Um, committee will meet on Thursday as for our standing uh, regular meeting. Um, I do hope uh, we will continue our work on, on Order 597, which is the pole-mounted EV chargers, which generated some questions from, from the committee members. We will also tackle the uh, CPC amended debt service, and then I'm hoping, um, and I will validate with the sponsors if they're available, that we can have a conversation about Ordinance 178, which is the affordable housing property tax exemption. It's getting a big no, so that may not be happening, um, but that's a general preview. I will firm it up in the morning and let everybody know. And I think that's it. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Community yeah. services. Yes, thank you. Sorry, I'm just looking up when our next meeting is. Uh, so motion to receive and file communication 574. Thank you. Second. Please. I'm already standing, sorry. <laughs> All right, so uh, this, is, this communication uh, pertains to the um, community bike share, which we've already discussed a little bit earlier. Um, but uh, so we, we did have a really uh, wonderful discussion in committee. Uh, Rick Tainter from Newburyport Livable Streets joined us and presented the basics of the proposed program. Um, the pilot, and, and uh, for the record, if you have anybody wants to follow along, the presentation that he um, gave is, starts, is in your packet and starts on page 137 of our packet. Um, but so the pilot will start relatively small with approximately 30 to 35 bikes at five to six stations in year one with the opportunity to grow to about 40 to 50 bikes at nine to 10 stations in years two and three. Um, the packet does, or sorry, the presentation that is in our packet shows where those various, um, those stations would be around the city. They are relatively co-located with the, the rail trail. Um, and uh, so there's, there's the opportunity for expansions in years two and three. There's also potential for expansion into uh, other areas of the city, such as the hospital, Parker River Refuge, as well as Maudley, Maudsley, and potentially um, surrounding towns such as Amesbury and Salisbury, should those towns uh, choose to um, opt into such a program. Uh, the station sites were determined by a community survey that was uh, done by uh, NLS in February, with about 130 respondents, all of which um, of the the uh, stations that were most popular were, as I said, on or near the rail trail. Uh, and the Parks Commission has approved the potential sites on any park property already. Uh, NLS has assessed vendors, but has only looked at vendors that offer a turnkey contract 
And what I mean by turnkey is that the vendor would be responsible for every aspect of the program, um, including maintaining the bikes in the stations, rebalancing of bikes at the stations so that they're not all in one place so that they can be moved around the city, uh, providing and maintaining the app for the bike rentals, collecting fees, seasonal storage of the bikes, as well as insurance and liability. Uh, so we all agreed that funding is probably, you know, sort of the stickiest point for this. And again, if you're following along on page 147, uh, the funding is detailed. Um, but so NLS, and when I say NLS, sorry, uh, I mean Newburyport Livable Streets. So NLS does not anticipate that uh, and the, any costs to the city for the first years of the pilot program. Um, but there is currently a remaining fundraising target of $75,000 to cover a current shortfall of $55,000, and I'll get into that. Um, so grants and user fees are anticipated to cover the entirety of the $289,000 for the three years of the pilot program. Those costs are estimated at $78,000 in uh, this uh, coming fiscal year, as well as $106,000 in both fiscal year 26 and 27. The city has secured a $180,000 federal grant over the three years, as well as another 16K in local funds. These funds combined with an anticipated $38,000 in user fees over the three years and another five to six grants, which are still unawarded, um, should cover the remainder of the costs. But again, those grants that have not yet actually been um, awarded are where we have that $55,000 shortfall. Um, and as I mentioned, NLS continues to do fundraising to um, potentially cover that should those grants not come through as anticipated. The timeline uh, is that the administration is, is um, targeting to submit orders for the grant exceptions for the um, four different donations at the total of $196,000. Again, that's the 180 in federal funding as well as the 16 in local funding. Um, they want to submit that for our next meeting on October 15th with a, a hopeful uh, first reading approval on October 28th. Uh, the vendor RFP, uh, the city is to manage the RFP process, selecting the vendor and executing a contract. The hopeful timeline is to execute on that contract in the, the January, February 2025 timeframe, um, have an RFP for a concrete vendor for um, pouring of the concrete pads where the stations would be in February or March of next year, the concrete poured uh, the next month. And then the hopeful is that the system would be up and running um, in April, May of next year in time for next spring and summer so that we could have this available as the tourist season kicks off. Um, DPS staff are anticipated to cover the vendor, vendor and grant management as well as oversight of pad pouring and maintenance. Um, Wayne Amaral was on hand and affirmed that his staff have the capability and capacity at this time, um, but he very much um, is passionate about keeping the scope of the project small at the beginning so that we can have a better understanding of how much work it would be really for, really for his staff. We also had a discussion of the safety, both of this it pertains to helmets and e-bikes. Um, we talked about the fact that there is no local helmet ordinance, but there is a state ordinance for anyone under the age of 16. However, bike share programs traditionally, and we would anticipate this bike share program not to allow for anyone under the age of 16 to be able to utilize the bike share. And there are no plans for e-bikes at this time, both because they're quite expensive uh, and that they'd be quite cost prohibitive, and can often have problems with um, speed and safety. Uh, the Ward 5 counselor was, uh, uh, was in attendance and um, adamant that the council will need to have a bigger role in the approval of the public ways and feels the council um, should approve this as a ser service to the city wants to offer and then approve the locations of the stations um, because the bikes will be used beyond just the, um, the parks and rail trail. Obviously, as we've already discussed, we uh, have Order 6112, which was a late file, which attempts to address this and will be heard in the PWS uh, commi uh, committee. Uh, and then the, the wrapping it up, they, we had a discussion on whether or not the service would ever cover its own costs. Um, NLS feels it's unlikely that the user fees would ever really cover the cost of the program unless we were to significantly increase the, the fees which then in turn would likely have a significant dec decrease in usage because of the um, significant cost upgrades. So um, 
They, but it is reasonable to think that there may be grants available um, after the pilot program. But it, it is something that we need to consider as we look at this. And you know, after the three-year pilot program, um, the city is going to have to take an assessment of how you, well the bikes were utilized, what the costs were, those sorts of things, and decide whether or not the city would want to support this. Um, and then lastly, we had a discussion about how to manage various safety concerns around cars and cyclists. As I think we probably all know from the paper, there has been um, several instances lately. Um, but I was actually very pleased to hear that um, the parks uh, department is currently installing counters on a rail trail to understand the numbers of walkers, bikers, strollers, etc. And the Parks Commission is working on new rules um, for signage and to better establish safety rules on the rail trail. Uh, the committee amended the order to include the presentation, which you now see in your packet, as I mentioned, and voted three to zero to receive and file. Thank you, Councilor Preston. Hmm. Any further discussion? Councilor Zeeb? Thank you. Um, first thing is a, a thank you. That was a, a really helpful committee report. I could not make it, unfortunately, and I, I thank the uh, NLS for their efforts on this. But I, I do want to raise my own alarm bells early that um, I'm really struggling with the numbers. Um, I think, you know, my experience with other things has been that uh, not, not as great as you might hope. So in other words, if the grants don't come through, um, if there are additional ancillary costs that we still would end up getting held up on them. My most recent example would be parklets. I think we tried our best to, you know, address those in a difficult time. But I, I do think we have a lot of hangover effect where we're not really quite convinced or feel that we actually understand the costs going in and the revenues coming, uh, coming in to offset those. In this case, for example, we have a timing question. You know, there are outstanding fundraising targets, but we already have an order to approve it, which to me tacitly says that if they don't get those, that we're going to just find the money to do it, I think, because where else would the money come from? Uh, secondarily, I've been very curious trying to follow the who of this uh, whole thing. So if I understood the chair's uh, report correctly, at the end of the day, the, the city is really is the party too. They, they, we would sign, actually we probably would not be involved in the contract part because it would be three years, which is historically known as the upper threshold for what a mayor can sign absent the city council. So that's a question mark um, as well. And then the last two things I want to say are, um, one is uh, just maybe a bit of a hot take, but the rail trails are really busy and I happen to think that that's because uh, a lot of sidewalks don't need a lot of effort. And so everybody's crowding the rail trail because it's the smoothest, easiest, safest thing to ride, which is fantastic. But uh, you know, I can just tell you from personal experience, trying to you know, run or do anything on, the, on a lot of sidewalks still really is a huge challenge. So I just don't know if we're, we're putting the cart before the horse here. And my final comment is just, I would love to hear from whomever, who is the target ideal user for this? Who, who would use this uh, in the city? Um, is it people visiting? Is that what we kind of think? I mean, to me, that would help inform some of the conversations around the user fees, around the locations of them. And I, I don't actually have a clear picture of who the actual profile is of the person who might use this. And I, I do think it would be helpful. So I'll follow it through Public Works and Safety, and I'll write uh, some things there. But I just will close with saying, this is a, just another classic one. If you're not ready to vote for funding on this, because eventually something's going to come, a transfer, something uh, along the way, probably from free cash, maybe from CPA, then I think uh, it, it's worth at least pumping the brakes to see if we, if we understand, especially with an ongoing cost. I yield. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Councilor Zeed, Council Preston. Yeah, thanks. Uh I'll try to remember all of that to, uh, to respond to it. But so firstly, on the, the funding front, I mean, Again, as I said, it, we, we talked a lot about the funding and you know, we, we all sort of recognize that that is sort of the sticking spot on this. Um, I can say that th they do have the $180,000 in the federal money now and it was an additional 16K now. So they have the money to cover for now. Um, but I think you know, if, if the other funds don't come through, either through the grants that are already out there or the fundraising, I think in the, the ensuing years is where they're, they're you know, going to have a, that struggle. And, I think the, the, the challenge is no matter what, it would have to come through us. So either the grants come through and we have to approve those grants, or if the grants don't come through and they, need, they have a funding shortfall, they're still going to have to come to the council to get that money, right? So I think we have that opportunity to, to make that decision of do we as a body want to use taxpayer money, not grant money, but you know local taxpayer money to pay for this program. Um, 
And I think we would, we'd be a part of that decision point, I guess is the best way to say it. Um, and then secondarily was um, amount of the busyness of the rail trails, right? So I did not include this in my report because I felt like I was already a little <laughs> loquacious, uh, but um, the, the Newburyport Livable Streets did do a bike volume count on a, um, a nice weekend in September 2023, I'm reading from my, my minutes. Um, and it, to, to look at just how many bikes are out there right now, uh, it was extrapolated to 24 hours with an estimated bike volume of around 400 bikes in the rail trail near High Street Bridge and about 320 bikes in the rail trail near the Osprey Sculpture, which is sort of by the AYS, I guess I would say. Um, and they estimate that the daily bike share rides would be um, somewhere in the order of 16 um, additional daily bike rides in 2025, 36 bike additional bike rides in 2026, an additional 48 bike rides in 2027. So it, it gives you an idea of how much more we, we, we would be adding by, um, by doing this. And then I can't remember now what your third point was. The audience. Add something. What was it? The audience. Like who's going to be Oh, it? who's going to use it? So this didn't come up so much in committee, but um, I have personally sort of had the same sort of conversation. Um, and, uh, you know, in my personal opinion, uh, I think this is more people from out of town, people that are coming in on the commuter rail, um, looking for a way to get into the downtown, people who come to downtown and want to ride bikes around downtown. Uh, I lived in Cambridge for 22 years before moving to Newburyport, and certainly bike share programs were an enormous hit there, right? But uh, in Cambridge, your average person may have too small of an apartment to be able to put your bike inside and those sorts of things, and therefore bike shares are much more, um, uh, appetizing, I guess, to that population. I think here, we generally have a little more space and you have somewhere for a bike. So I think most people that want to ride a bike in Newburyport probably already have a bike in Newburyport. So my personal opinion would be that it's probably more people from out of town, but um, I think that's a wonderful service to, to um, offer to people coming in from out of town. Certainly those people drive up revenues for us through meals tax and those sorts of things. So um, I think you know that you could certainly make an argument that the increase in usage of uh, could of people coming into town could potentially be a source to cover this. But that's just my two cents. It was not discussed in committee. Thank you. Further discussion, Councilor Khan. Yeah, thank you, Council President. Uh, yeah, great questions. I, I'm glad to see that we'll have more of the financing conversation, I think, with the order that's been sent to Public Works and Safety. Um, I think I may have shared this when I was on the committee call, um, which was really good and it was very thorough. I thought that was a great conversation, good questions asked. Um, the one thing I do want to add in terms of the kind of the usability or who would be using it, I, I will say that it, it also is, and one wouldn't think this, but it happened when I went to a similar program in DC area, is even though I visited relatives who lived there, it was great for them with their bikes to be able to take visitors. So many of us, even as residents, when we have visitors coming and we want to enjoy the rail trail and things that we have here, people don't come to you know, our visitors don't come with bikes, so sometimes it's nice to be able to have something like this to be able to enjoy too. So I think there is a lot of really good potential to add um, more to the city in terms of things to do to enjoy all the amazing things we have um, built over time, and I, I think this is uh, one that can further enhance. And I, and I do look forward to the, the, I think the financing piece is a good one though, and uh, look forward to that conversation. Thank you. Councillor Donahue. Thank you, President. Um, yeah, I just want to speak to one more point of usability um, or, or the users. Um, so the two that were pointed out are very valid, but there is a third that comes to mind that I'd like to point out because it's pretty significant. Um, so Newburyport has an uncapped number of on-site liquor consumption licenses. So in my mind, having a couple of locations of bike shares, you know, uh, near the downtown, um, if there's going to be a couple by the Waterfront Park, anywhere in, in the vicinity. Um, yeah, there's a lot of bars. And I would imagine that some folks would love to be able to just maybe bike home instead of, um, you know, Uber home and get their car the next day or worse, drive home, which is sadly all too often the case in this town. Um, a lot of folks get in their cars after the bars. So my point... Give them bikes. 
they can't kill themselves on bikes or anyone else, primarily. I mean, you know, unless they run into other cars. But my point, I think, <laughs> I think you get it. <laughs> Thanks. Councilor Harmon. Thank you. Um, I'll just add briefly. Uh, as this will continue in uh, public works and safety, uh, I will be brief. But I, the, just to the Ward 1 Councilor's concerns, one of the things that I think is really um, stood out to me about this is it's a proposal for a three-year pilot. And I know there are many who will say, oh, it's a pilot, and then it just turns into a, an entitlement of some sort that we have to fund. But truly, I believe Newburyport Livable Streets in, in their presentation is, is looking toward a pilot to understand who is the right user for this. Um, what is the, you know, is it a hit, is it not a hit before we, you know, go forward? And to be able to do that primarily through grant funding, I believe, is uh, very responsible um, for us to understand something, you know, well in advance of us committing our own finances to it. And last is uh, one of the potential outcomes, if it is a hit in Newburyport, is that we bring along others in our uh, region, uh, both Amesbury and Salisbury, could have connection points to this bike share program. There are multiple um, uh, models for this. I think um, in the Concord area, they have one in Lexington. So um, they've studied this, but they're not, they're not saying it's something that we, you know, we need yet, um, but that's something that there may be an audience for and we would understand better following a three-year pilot without uh, hopefully any impact on taxpayers. Councilor McCauley. Yeah, I, um, in, in general, I too found the uh, discussion uh, worthwhile. I, I found uh, New Report Livable Streets are ahead of what they're trying to do, uh, got their arms around. Um, the one thing that, and I'll telegraph the messaging that I'm looking forward to is, uh, while we looked at the numbers and the finances that's there, uh, what is truly missing is the metrics that would um, rate this and measure this as a success or a failure going forward. Uh, we constantly, uh, anecdotally, um, say that we think so many people will ride the bikes or this location will attract tourists or we think we need grant funding, et cetera, along the way. Um, those are all nice to haves, but uh, when we start getting down to the nitty gritty and evaluating things, um, you know, there is some leeway with the grant funding, but uh, even with the grant funding, the, the next s set of questions is, what are the metrics that we would be looking at um, to invest in the cells uh, as a city, as a community, et cetera, to be able to uh, make it worthwhile? And I think that's what the missing piece was. Uh, I think they have, the, um, at a high level, the numbers. Um, I think they still need some work on the low level as to the operational aspect of things, and we'll get there. Uh, but somewhere in between there, I'd like to see some metrics, uh, uh, measurements that we can uh, uh, then uh, uh, objectively look at this uh, going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Lane. I do support this. I, I feel it's important in, in having real life experience in transportation. Um, having these down by the rail, the uh, commuter rail is going to be huge. Downtown is going to be huge. Plum Island is going to be huge. Just places that I've heard personally people say transportation is terrible in your report and you just can't get. Um, regular rides and just a side note um, don't get on a bike and drive drunk it's actually an OUI and punishable by the same offenses so I appreciate the sentiment <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> I don't ride just don't ride around drunk thanks <laughs> I mean ideally they won't do it in either situation <laughs> okay any further discussion motion to receive and file we could do a voice vote i'm sure all those in favor say aye aye, aye. all those opposed say nay okay thank you thank you councillor preston um general government um i will be uh sending um you know per the order that we authorize the investigation i will be uh, reporting and writing to the council prior to the commencement of an investigation i'm uh almost finalizing um, a firm that would work with us, I think that would be objective, has no connections to Newburyport, uh, no conflicts that they or I am aware of and would follow uh, the various pieces of the scope that we have in the order and uh, I'll be reporting that to you uh, in the next couple of days. Okay, license and permits. Thank you, Council President. Um, I would like to make a motion to approve 
application 190 and application 230. Second. Okay. Uh, point of order, I'm going to recuse myself on 230. You could do them both collectively. I live on Hancock Street. Um, not, a, not, a, not on the planning part of, of this, and uh, Councillor Zee is going to jump in for me. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, so, um, application 190 is an amended request from a previously approved um, request from the Chamber of Commerce for their fall festival. Um, what they've asked is if they can uh, expand that to <coughs> include the merchants that are on um, a number of our streets in the downtown. I'll give you them specifically. Um, they want to be able to have, um, they want to be able to, to, to have the, the uh, merchants um, on um, Pleasant Street, Inn Street, and Merrimack Street uh, in the downtown area be able to place a rack or table on the sidewalk in front of their stores. Uh, they did emphasize that they will be communicating to the retailers the requirements to uh, continue to make the sidewalks uh, uh, handicapped accessible. And so they, uh, the applicant appeared before us and the uh, recommendation of the committee was to approve this uh, th three to zero. Uh, the, uh, the other item, which is which the council president uh, has recused himself from, uh, is just a block party in his neighborhood. Uh, th they've had this uh, party before. Uh, there's <coughs> been no, no issues. Um, th the um, the, the uh, ap applicant was before us and discussed this, and again, it was recommended uh, three to zero in committee for approval. Thank you. Any other comments on the collective motion 190 and 230? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. I have to I'm going to relinquish back the chair to the president. Uh, okay. you yes, your back. conflict has resolved. Not going yeah. to pull it to the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file. Uh, let me just get the application number. Application 218. Second. Uh, the reason I, that I'm recommending that we receive and file it is because it was an application for a um, sidewalk sign uh, for a specific period which has now expired. Uh, after numerous attempts to have them come before the committee, we, they just couldn't uh, arrange a time where, th where they were able to meet with us. So, um, so that application, uh, the time frame expired on September 1st. So uh, that's my recommendation from the committee is to receive and file the application. Uh, we're welcome to, to, uh, to resubmit it if they, if they would like to have that for um, a different time frame <coughs> period. Okay, any further discussion? Motions to receive and file? Through. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion to uh, remove well, uh, the, the Shanty's extension. Um, I'd like to make a motion to place it back into committee. Second. 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 Um, the reason for that is we received a communication today from the uh, firehouse um, and in, in that communication, they're stating that, that they're not in favor of this application. They have some issues with it. So I'd like to invite the, uh, the firehouse to uh, attend and the applicants to attend if they choose to, uh, our, our next meeting where we'll take this up again before bringing it back out again. Okay. So our motion is to keep it in commit or place it back, in committee. back into committee yeah. instead of coming out. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wright. Councillor Shand? Sure. Uh, motion to approve appointment 508. Heather Second. Rogers, reappointment to the Planning Board. Second. Second. Uh, so we had a 
quick meeting. I think it was one of our fastest, but uh, we had Ms. Rogers speak before our planning board meeting uh, two weeks ago. Uh, Chair Tainter spoke about having her experience as a realtor on the planning board was a huge asset, and she, she has enjoyed being on the planning board for the years she has been on there. And uh, Councillor Preston spoke to her volunteerism with the Julie Geiger Crisis Center and spoke to her character. So the committee voted three to zero to approve her reappointment. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call on the Roll appointment. Roll call on appointment 508. Councilor Wright? Yes. Council Z? Yes. Council Donahue? Yes. Council Granitz? Yes. Councilor Harmon? Yes. Councilor Kahn? Yes. Councilor Lane? Yes. Councilor McCauley? Yes. Councilor Preston? Yes. Councilor Shan? Yes. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Thank you. So, um, comment on some how the rest of the meeting went. We did have our planning board joint committee meeting on the Peapod ordinance. I think it went well. I think we had some good questions asked and answered. It was continued. I would ask the two uh, uh, sponsors of the ordinance if they could expand on their presentation to include in those three pillars of 40, friendly 40B, unfriendly 40B, and uh, just a development agreement, pros and cons, so we could have that discussion on Wednesday when we continue the um, agreement, I mean, sorry, the meeting with the planning board, if that's amenable to the two sponsors. I'd like just to keep that one going. Also on Wednesday, we'll be introducing the ADU ordinance. We have the two sponsors here as well. Um, if you have your presentation, send it on. We'll have it ready on Wednesday night. ADU will go first, Peapod will go second, since that's a continuation. And tomorrow night, our committee is meeting for the housing production plan. We will have Director Port, Ian Burns from the Maravac Valley Planning Board, and uh, members of the Affordable Housing Trust, and members from uh, the planning office to speak on the housing production plan. This is the third housing production plan we've had since 2013. If you go back to the 2013 resolution, you'll see that we have actually started chipping away almost about 50% of what was in that original one, basically with the 40R. So tomorrow night's discussion will be uh, another good one with our third round of this, and we will make sure that the public comment uh, that was made tonight, I'll bring that up with Director Port to make sure it's uh, out there as well. Um, and that is tomorrow night at 6.30. So tomorrow night at 6.30 is planning board, I mean, sorry, our committee, committee of the whole, housing production plan, and then Wednesday night, seven o'clock, the two uh, ordinances. And then as I stated, we put, I put the um, communication in for the remainder of the year because I do believe, hopefully by November the 3rd, I think that's the first Wednesday, we should have direction from the state on MBTA communities. So. With all that being said, we wanted to make sure we got the um, ad in the paper for that one first. So, and we do need to have two readings on MBTA communities, and I would really like us not to be voting on this the last meeting in December. So, that's that. That's it for planning development. Thank you, Councillor Shand. Uh, Councillor McCauley. Uh, thank you, Council President. I um, have a number of items here uh, tonight. Um, motion to approve Order uh, 595. Second. Second. Uh, this uh, order before you is uh, the first of its kind where we're actually accepting uh, private road into our trash hauling business. We uh, revamped our ordinance in June of this year, uh, allow, gave a pathway to those folks who are on private roads who would like to uh, take advantage of a city service of trash uh, pickup. Um, they, uh, it'll be trash pickup and um, recycling. Um, the caveats that we had uh, going forward, which you'll see here, is a letter of indemnity from the HOA acknowledging that these are the only city services that they're getting and they acknowledge that. And um, having a letter of indemnity and insurance um, for, them, for their property, uh, as well as um, having 50% of the uh, new um, clients uh, register for composting going forward, which will be an ongoing uh, measurement criteria. Composting is a huge issue for us. It reduces weight. Our charges are by weight. We can reduce weight via composting and offload some of that. Then we can um, live within the volumes that we have, which will always be the discussion, as, as you see, as we go to implement it going forward. So this paperwork um, has been triple checked because it's the first. Uh, we thank the applicants for coming forward. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of um, things that had to go, they had to jump through on their side to get it done, um, but I'm happy to say in committee we voted three to zero uh, to uh, favor a recommendation by the full council on this. Thank you.
Thank you, Councillor. Any further discussion? Councillor Zeed? Just very briefly, I just want to say I'm, I, I look forward to supporting this. I think it was a, a compromise effort to get to here, I, but I want to keep banging my same drum on this, that um, these, when these subdivisions are created, and we always say there won't be any more subdivisions, and then there's a subdivision, <laughs> um, that they really should be frankly planned and contemplated as public ways from the start. They should be the proper width, they should be careful, careable for by our city. And you know, this is an elegant solution to what was a very thorny problem for many years, which was the unofficial nature of private ways and the yes we can and no we can't, which was very unofficial. Um, but I don't like the concept of, you know, and it, you know we'll, we'll never give you city services and, and obviously here we're making a little bit of a, a concession on that. It's just a very hard line to run, to, to sort of stay on and frankly the residents have a sensible argument when they say, I don't understand, I, I pay property taxes like everybody else, I just want to avail myself of the same services that others get. So to me, it's a foundationally broken thing. So uh, while this, this does solve this problem for these folks, when subdivisions of this nature, residential, not apartment complex and that sort of thing, I just think they should be contemplated as public ways from the start. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion, Councillor Donahue. Yeah, I just want to echo the sentiment from the Ward 1 Councillor because um, I live in a development like that. <laughs> and it, they're all over the city where they were designed specifically to never be adopted and never have city services. So I really think it would be good to move forward um, with, with any kind of subdivision to really know, yeah, they're going to be part of the city. They're going to pay taxes. They're going to want the same services. So that, that's, I appreciate that sentiment. Thank you. Any further discussion, comment, input? Councillor Harmon. Thank you. Um, since this is the first one, I have some curiosities, if I may, through the chair to the um, chair of uh, Public Works and Safety, thank you for the work that went into creating and getting this first um, example through um, to this phase. I'm curious if there was either in part of the development uh, prior to this first application or during the discussion, um, I don't see, and maybe I'm just not reading fast enough, the. Uh, mechanism for enforcement if they fall below the threshold of 50% or um, expiration. So this, this goes in perpetuity. What if they decide they no longer wanted this? Is, did, w did the committee or has the city contemplated um, either enforce enforceable removal of an agreement or an expiration of some sort? Mr. McCall? Uh, yeah, uh, in response to the Ward 4 Council, in the ordinance that we uh, redrafted in June, it had an enforcement language in it, and that would be reviewed annually by the Sustainability Office, and they would do so either through the HOA or Black Earth if they chose submitting the names of those people who participate, as well as uh, weighing uh, the trash before, during, and after. Uh, along the way, there's there's a metric and uh, that they can evaluate that on along the way, and the penalty for that is warning, with the potential of going back, uh, having us remove them from trash hauling going forward. So we we don't um, it's not cut and dry. We want to try to work with them uh, to be able to do that. And most of the time, what we'll find is it's it's an education and awareness thing more than anything else. Thank but you. there is a there is a uh, a mechanism in there for enforcement. Thank you. Thank you both. Any further discussion? Okay, uh, hearing none, uh, I think we'll do a roll call on this. Mm -hmm. I'm roll sorry, call. roll call? Yep. Sorry, I need to wake up. Uh, Council Wright? Yes. Council Zeed? Yes. Council Dunning? Yes. Councilor Granis? Yes. Councilor Harmon? Yes. Councilor Khan? Yes. Councilor Lane? Yes. Councilor McCauley? Yes. Councilor Preston? Yes. Councilor Sheehan? Yes. Councilor Cameron? Thank you. Yes. Uh, motion to approve Order 596. Second. Uh, this is a uh, licensed contractor, Jeffrey Creek. Uh, the applicant appeared before us. He's doing some work uh, locally, uh, filled out the application, bond order, all this paperwork is, is involved. He had a public hearing uh, through PWS, which is part and parcel of the process. Uh, we, voted, we recommended three to zero for approval. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Order 596, uh, hearing none, uh, this probably could be a voice vote. Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. All aye. Those, all those opposed say no. All right, thank you. 
Uh, motion to approve ordinance 177. Second. Uh, this is a uh, uh, really, it's a change listed to the residential parking zones, but it's really an edit uh, along the way. As you see here in your packet, uh, page 211 and 212, uh, really it addresses an issue that is, uh, has crept up recently along the way with the advent of our uh, license plate readers, et cetera, along the way, we're able to accommodate this. So actually in uh, section uh, 13180, section four, uh, the parking clerk uh, or, or shall find that the applicant qualifies under the section for a residential parking permit, uh, that the vehicle registration show the same eligible address. Previously, the registration and the license had to show the same address. Uh, we've had some instances where uh, folks have their uh, cars registered in Florida, excuse me, have their license in Florida, but their cars registered here. They do pay excise tax here in the city besides other taxes along the way. Um, and so the conversation in the <coughs> was that eliminating the match of the license and the registration uh, would ease the burden of some of the folks, especially downtown, uh, where uh, these um, uh, permits are needed uh, going forward. Uh, it was a recommendation three to zero for approval. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, this would be an ordinance, so uh, we need a roll call. Yes, um, approving 177, Councilor Wright? Yes. Councilor Z? Yes. Councilor Dunning? Yes. Councilor Granis? Yes. Councilor Harmon? Yes. Councilor Kahn? Yes. Councilor Lane? Yes. Councilor McCauley? Yes. Councilor Preston? Yes. Councilor Shan? Yes. And Councilor Cameron? Yes. Thank you. Uh, mo motion to, I'm gonna skip one, motion to approve ordinance 183. Second. Um, this is an ordinance to amend uh, chapter 12, article one, section uh, 1210, surveillance. Um, we have had an existing uh, ordinance on the book that said um, surveillance cameras of any type needed to come through city council for approval to be permanent. Um, but that really led to a lot of questions uh, as much as anything else. So in this, in an attempt, and we vetted uh, this uh, through committee is, um, uh, we, uh, we actually defined what uh, surveillance technology means. And um, believe it or not, none of this is futuristic. It's all available today. It's actually available with software packages that could be overlaid into our existing infrastructure going forward. So this is not futuristic. It is here. We try to have a definition. I think in the future, people will amend those going forward. Um, besides defining it, we wanted to define an application process. There are 11 uh, points, purpose, data collection, locations, data access, how we're protecting it. Uh, of particular note, um, fiscal cost as well, is the potential impact of privacy in the city, uh, potential impact for group, minority groups, underserved groups, et cetera. Along the way, we wanna make sure that no one's being singled out along here. There's a, um, a definition for approving or disproving the acquisition of the technology. Um, it's listed here. Uh, we'd like the, we're asking for as part of this, the administration to create a uh, surveillance use uh, policy and provide that back to us by order uh, for approval within the next 60 days. That will uh, allow the administration to work through some of the details of who has access, the training, et cetera, along the way that is needed. Um, and then uh, really um, uh, the bulk of this is follow up. Uh, the enforcement piece of this is submission to the city council of, of a surveillance use report. Uh, the first one is 12 months after we approve it and then ongoing 24 months afterwards along the way. Pretty much goes, um, uh, everything that happened in the application in reverse that says is, are we getting the most bang for the buck? Are we getting the right fiscal uh, output of this? Are we um, you know, preventing uh, uh, crimes against assets and things like that in our city along the way? And we wanna make sure that there's a little bit of checks and balances here. Uh, in, the, in the committee discussion, we, we did get into uh, the, the discussion of civil liberties and how far government is intruding. Um, and it uh, has nothing to do with uh, outside uh, uh, cameras that just stream, but actually this is uh, um, looked at uh, uh, for asset, city assets, as well as employees, as well as 
uh, private citizens as well as potential voters, uh, demonstrators, et cetera, along the way. So uh, it, it was a heated discussion and I think it was good debate um, that happened. Um, we do want to have an exception for uh, the use of police. If they need uh, police going, uh, have special circumstances, the ask is that after uh, their uh, use of that within 90 days, they let us know that they have used it and they're not using it again going forward. Um, and then uh, the last piece of that is um, in conversation with uh, our, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the union representative from the Teamsters, uh, they want to be consistent across the board that they're, we ban the use of facial recognition going forward. Uh, with that, we had evaluated over two different sessions uh, there were some tweaks along the way, which we've amended uh, in there, uh, but for the most part, we recommended this three to zero for your review and considerations. Great. Thank you. Further discussion? Okay. This would be a roll call on ordinance 183. This would be approve on first reading. Approve on first reading. Councilor Wright. Yes. Councilor Zeed. Yes. Councilor Donahue. Yes. Councilor Granis. Yes. Councilor Harmon. Yes. Councilor Kahn. Yes. Councilor Lane. Yes. Councilor McCauley. Yes. Councilor Preston. Yes. Councilor Shan. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Thank you. Um, so there's a motion to uh, approve uh, uh, order 601. Second. Uh, this is a list of uh, proposed new cameras uh, going forward. Uh, the administration had submitted to us uh, one, two, eight cameras around City Hall. Uh, after some of the discussion and debate uh, that we talked about in committee, we'd uh, like to recommend, uh, we've amended this and we'd like to recommend three, first floor door, lower le level door, and the first floor rear entrance going forward. Uh, the ones that we were uncomfortable with were the hallways, uh, the auditorium, as well as the one from uh, Pleasant Street looking out. Um, and, and I'll just give you some background on that. We understand that uh, from a safety and security standpoint, um, we're okay with uh, look, uh, having um, cameras, notice doors, people come in, people leave along the way. But what they do in City Hall along the way also has employees here. And it, it, um, it, it, it again, it was a good conversation. Uh, for example, we have the main hallway here. We have a lot of folks that, um, uh, come here to vote, come here to do city business. Uh, we have employees that would uh, be coming in and out of HR for whatever reasons they might be. We have employees coming and going to use the restrooms, all of those things. Uh, I know they're not surveillance along the way uh, because as we've learned, the new technology just captures the pictures and stores them in the cloud, but then again, doesn't, um, isn't recalled until there's an event but there's no definition of what an event is. There's no definition of uh, the checks and balances, and that's what we hope to see with the policy going forward. Uh, people vote in City Hall. Uh, there's political uh, group groupings that happen in the auditorium, et cetera. Uh, we, uh, Brown Square has become our public square. Uh, some of our vulnerable and minority communities are out there for flag raisings and uh, Juneteenth, et cetera, along the way, um, and you know, um, it would be most likely inappropriate uh, to have uh, folks being surveilled or uh, have uh, their likeness being taken along the way in case there was an event, et cetera, along the way. Again, we haven't defined what an event is. We haven't defined the fact that the, we, have, we are taking images, we are storing the data. Um, it is uh, stored in a cloud uh, along the way. Uh, we have assurances for everyone that it's safe and secure with multi-factor authentication, but ask uh, Chase uh, Bank, ask AT&T, ask Equifax, ask Blue Cross Blue Shield, their data was secure as well, and now it's not, right? So um, that's not necessarily something we want to get into uh, along the way. And so again, it was, it was a wide-ranging debate that happened along the way. The compromise on that was to move forward with our recommendation of these three cameras and not the other cameras going forward. I think I've given you all the ins and outs of the, so thank you for your patience on that. And our recommendation was three to zero on the amended portion. Okay, great, thank you. So this is order 601, the surveillance cameras amended in committee. Councilor Lane. 
Um, just a question, did this, uh, as far as the cost of these cameras, are we looking at that as well? Um, I know I've heard in the past some outlandish numbers for these cameras, and I just want to know if that's, if this is hand in hand. Um, so it's kind of a clumsy kind of answer I'm going to give you, right? Is that when we got the original request, it was bundled for entrance, new entrance pad uh, securities plus cameras um, and the like. So what we're going through now is um, through the application process of saying um, what the camera would cost itself separated from the, um, uh, from the entrance facility uh, and keypads and things like that that go forward. We're not there yet. Uh, and I think that um, my understanding of this is that we've, we had a uh, volume purchase agreement that we entered into or tried to enter into uh, in, July, in June when we approved this. Uh, going forward, and I think there's some horse trading going on right now with some uh, trying to get the volumes for some existing cameras that could be replaced. For example, the Harbor Master uh, had cameras in the new building, uh, but the feeds didn't actually go anywhere. Um, so if we replace, if we can swap out some of those cameras that may exist with the new technology, newer technology cameras, we can still stay within that. Um, to answer your question. I don't think we're at the exact point yet that we're all be comfortable that says uh, we have a one-to-one -one accounting for this. Uh, I think it's probably 70, 75, 80% there along the way. Thank you. I'll on the uh, Chief of Staff who looks like he has it information. To, to weigh in? Sure, please. It, yeah, if it's ahead. helpful as a ballpark, $2,000 per camera, counting the hardware and the 10-year license. Okay. Further discussion? Okay, hearing none, uh, order 601. Uh, I think we can do a voice vote on this as an order. Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, all those opposed, nay. Okay. Uh, thank you. And uh, uh, motion to approve uh, order 594. Second. Uh, this is a um, uh, state grant for a, a parking study, and before we say another parking study, yes, that uh, is. We spent some time on the scope, uh, which is uh, part of the inherent delay here. We did make a uh, amendment um, in committee uh, where uh, in the first paragraph, it's underlined on page uh, 220, uh, it says we have a number of uh, needs to consider for downtown parking. Um, in particular, as we have a number of businesses that need employee parking, we have high visitor levels, three seasons of the year, and our addition was, and we have ongoing downtown resident parking needs going forward. So, um, you know, we understand that um, uh, there is uh, some, some need here to better understand parking. It's always uh, an issue going forward. Uh, I do know that uh, we are in the process of implementing things from 2018 that got put on hold because of COVID going forward. Uh, hopefully the time required from the parking staff uh, is minimal. The data, uh, we're collecting a, a lot of, of data about cars and parking trends and things like that. Uh, hopefully the consultant can take advantage of that and give us some vision as to uh, how we would address, let's say, future development or uh, maybe uh, expanding our parking garage or something like that as, as uh, crazy ideas going forward. So uh, we did recommend three to zero to approve this. Right, thank you. Comment, uh, Councilor Zeed? Thank you. Yeah, I don't plan to support this. Um, just having been through a number of these before, I think the inherent thing that's it, important to realize is you know, sort of what I was getting at with the bike share questions is why, why do we do anything? And I've asked in a couple of meetings, waterfront related typically, why do we run our parking system? And uh, we kind of have maybe vacillated a little bit. Is it for profit? Is it too favored? visitors? Is it to favor residents? And I think, um, I, uh, with res respect to the chair, I think that the time investment from the parking department will be more than maybe I think it should be or would like it to be. And second is, th these always come back and tell you that your resident parking program makes no sense. You shouldn't be offering stickers for 
whatever, $20. We already know that you know, if we were running this as a pure profit business, it would of course be illogical to sell annual passes for a cost, but that's the point of the purpose, and this is a public entity, not a private entity. So I, I just don't need somebody to come back and tell me the same thing again. We, we understand that. I think that's been the public policy. If that's not what we want it to be, somebody can come in and say abolish the, the, the resident passes or you know, quadruple them in cost or more if you re really want to have that debate. Um, so those are my, some of my reasons. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor mm -hmm. Seed. For the comment, discussion? Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll do a uh, voice vote, I guess. Okay. Um, should we find all those in favor? Say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. nay. No. Okay. Two no's, thank you. Nine to two. Uh, Council President, I'd like to uh, ask that, uh, I'd like to make a motion to remove the second appointment 515 um, from committee. Second. Um, and uh, uh, so I think we have to vote on that. Because yeah, it all, wasn't. All, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, no. Uh, so this is a motion to receive and file this portion of it. Uh, when this uh, uh, appointment came in, it came in as a bundled uh, type of offer that had both the appointment as well as the draft contract going in. The uh, mayor and administration have clarified their point. They wanted to share the information, get feedback, et cetera, along the way. I think that was accomplished. Um, so we had 515 and 515A, if you will, uh, with this. And I like to receive and file this because uh, when the final contract comes in, then that will be a different discussion going forward. Second. Thank you. So, so motion receive and file uh, made by uh, Councilor McCauley and seconded Just by Councilor Point of order, I mean, they do have the same number, so I think if you want to add an A or something, you should. It's confusing to have minutes saying appointment 515 approved and appointment 515 received and filed. So. We could um, make a Scribner's addition of 515A or 515 on the draft contract. Maybe. Yeah. Hmm? Or 515 original. Or yeah, original I appointment or something like leave. that. Original had the, well, it came in bundled, so it really should be 515 and 515A if, yeah, if we're really going to do that. Okay, if you want to add the A to the other one. Yeah, it's done. Okay, 515A appointment. All right, so a motion was made and seconded to receive and file this. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Uh, Council President, no uh, further action. Uh, we will not be having a meeting on uh, uh, 7th, which is our regularly scheduled time. There is a DPS-sponsored meeting on Colby Farm, Lowe, North Atkinson at that time as well. Uh, we think that's a better uh, use of our time uh, going forward. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And uh, we are at go to the order. Councilor Wright. So I'm done. Um, thank you. Um, I'd, I'd just like to thank my uh, fellow uh, councillor, uh, Councillor McCauley, for, uh, for hosting uh, our last license and permits meeting. Uh, uh, I'm happy to announce that the stork has arrived and uh, my new grandson oh. is here. <laughs> but I'd like to thank uh, Councillor McCauley's flexibility in, in, in hosting the meeting here in, in, in person in the chambers. Did you have to name him Macaulay? Fortunately <laughs> 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 enough. That's a good first name, too. Uh, Councillor Harmon. Thank you. Um, not as fun as a <laughs> new arrival. Uh, but I did, if it uh, is OK with the council president, uh, want to give an update on the Whittier task force. Please. Thank you. Um, so and apologies, I have not been able to huddle with the mayor, who I think we're all aware is uh, under the weather uh, in the extreme. He was not able to attend this meeting. Um, but to recap, after the failed vote in January, we established or continued to work together with the other uh, cities and towns in the Whittier Regional Agreement. Um, at the meeting prior to June, um, we split into three subgroups, uh, school committee, financing, and uh, the overall regional agreement. Um, this was our meeting hosted by Wes Newbury. Um, getting a tour of all the town halls and facilities in the region um, where they have owls. Um, the uh, meeting was intended to take all of the subgroups and find out what our action plans would be toward 
amending the agreement, adjusting finances, or adjusting the school committee. Um, unfortunately, as I think a lot of us predicted, there was nothing that would receive unanimous approval out of those subcommittees. Um, and so attention flipped to two main topics, um, one of which is timely, so appreciate uh, keeping you here a little bit longer tonight. Um, the state, our state representatives, uh, both um, in the, the House and Senate, as well as the governor's office, um, in terms of uh, trying to find some way forward for the agreement um, with Haverhill having uh, expressed multiple times now, Mayor Barrett, that they would not be willing to reopen the agreement in order to change how Newburyport is um, allocated their expenses related to the building project. Um, uh, or any other community for that matter, but specifically uh, as a representative from Newburyport, that is one thing that we have been uh, hoping to um, get to. Um, and so now it goes to the state level to see if we can get our representatives there to potentially offset costs related to a future building project. That all begins a whole new year's worth of work probably. So the second topic and the reason for the update tonight is um, I received, and you all likely did, but it went to my spam or, or unfocused um, inbox, a, an invitation to participate in, uh, and to be aware of the new uh, Northern Essex Community College Whittier Tech website. Um, so the UMass Donahue Institute is conducting focus groups from anybody who's interested as far as I can tell. Um, you, there's a sign-up sheet, there are multiple sessions, they're held on Zoom. There will be cameras and recordings. Um, and the goal is to have these um, focus groups inform the potential partnership between Northern Essex and Whittier to create a shared campus. Uh, the belief is, and I'll wrap this up, uh, the belief is that uh, the economies of scale in terms of um, Northern Essex having classroom space, parking space, et cetera, uh, available and flat land to build a school on uh, and infrastructure and location that doesn't uh, require a lot of additional access roads and things like that that were expensive components of the school project that we evaluated um, last year. Th this would be a much less expensive project, still in the six figures, but you know they're, they're hoping to bring something forward that would be much more palatable to communities um, as it relates to Newburyport. It's worth sharing with the council that our share would still be the second largest in the region, regardless of the number of students that we send there. So even a much scaled down project would, would likely carry material costs for Newburyport if and when we get to the point of evaluating that. Um, that goes to the, is, is with the MSBA now in terms of allowing these, this partnership to be explored. They'll get their uh, response at the same time that we will for the high school roof project. Uh, and then they will continue to work, for, go forward with this um, partnership exploration. So I will send uh, the email or to the council president, however you would like for me to share if you didn't receive the email, um, but there it contains a survey as well as a link to their website where you can also explore the committee, the planning committee that they've assembled to uh, shepherd this project. It's quite large. Um, and so unless there are any questions, thank you. Yeah, it'd be great if you could recirculate that. I don't, I get those up, I get updates, I but I don't think I've seen that survey. Thank you, I will. Thank you. Any further good of the order? Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, thank you. Thank you.